Hi, my name is Gene Latoile from Four Star Farms in Northfield, Massachusetts. Uh, we are now in our hop yard. It's a little experiment we tried, uh, we started four years ago. Uh, we put in six different varieties of hops to see what would grow well in this area. Hops grow most any place, but different varieties do better in different areas. The hops are very fast growing. On May 1st, they were all cut down to ground level. And right now it is middle of, July, middle of June, and they're 18 feet up, and some places even more. So they grow that fast. Come summer solstice, they stop growing vertically, or just about now, and they start growing horizontally. They'll start to get bushy and spread out a lot. They'll grow until around the middle of August, and then that's about harvest time. And harvest depends somewhat on weather, as it does with almost all agricultural crops. Hops are very prone to fungus. And when it's really wet, it's very tough to grow them. Uh, last year was really dry, so you get different problems each year in the Northeast. If you're out West, where most hops are grown, I think 99.9% .9 of the hops in the U.S. are grown in uh, Washington, Oregon, and Idaho. They're much more stable climate. It's more of a desert climate, and they irrigate when they need to. Over here, we can have a desert one year, and we can have floods the next year. So uh, it's a little more of a challenge growing hops. But again, another reason why we're growing different varieties to see what will do well in the different climates. The picking is actually the most important part of everything or harvesting of any crop because if you can't harvest it right in a timely manner and clean enough, it doesn't matter what you grow because you're not going to be able to sell it. Uh, we do have six varieties of hops growing here. We put in a number of varieties to see what would grow well in this area. Way back 150, 200 years ago, hops were very popular in this area because this is where the population center was. Uh, but the newer varieties now, you're really not sure what will grow. Everything depends on the climate. Different varieties like different climates. What's growing best over here, and from what I've heard other people talking about, this variety here is Cascade. Uh, it's leaps and bounds above the rest. Uh, two varieties that are doing well are Magnum and Nugget. Uh, a couple of other varieties, Kent Golding, we've got nothing out of in four years. Uh, Mount Hood, we're getting a little bit out of, and Willamette, we're getting a little bit out of. But the first three are the ones that look like they will be producing well for this region. Uh, these hops, we, hops we've been growing here for about four years. They're nice, they're mature, and uh, we're actually a little late in picking them because we've been working with UVM and MDAR in developing a hop picker, a portable picker that will actually go around to different farms to be able to assist farmers in the harvest. The harvest is the most time-consuming part. It's almost impossible to do it by hand. It just takes so long. Just to do one of these binds would take about two hours for one person to get a pound and a half of product. Uh, just really not feasible. So what we do now, this part of it is still somewhat manual. Someone will come by and will cut the base of the hop. Just cut it right off here so it's separated. And then up at the top, somebody will come by with a staging. And they'll cut the top and will drop the plant down onto a trailer. And we try and make sure it's laid out evenly. So when we unroll it, it comes apart evenly and we don't have to start tearing everything apart to get the binds apart. Once the trailer is full, the trailer will go around and go into the building. In the building, we have the hop picker. Now, this is a... It's somewhat of an old design, but some new improvements, some new enhancements. The most important of which is that it's portable. That means we can take it from farm to farm. Usually a hop picker, it's a huge machine. It's stationary. Once you put it there, it stays there for years. This one here can move from farm to farm to be able to help the farmers in their picking without having each farmer having to have an expensive machine like that. Uh, the hops will go in on one side of the machine. They go on, it's called the bind feed. Somebody will hook it over the hooks and it'll work its way around and come into the inside of the machine. Somebody is, will be on the front of the machine just guiding it in. On the machine itself, there are a number of fingers, and the fingers go in the opposite direction that the hop, the bind is going through. So if the bind is coming through this way, the fingers are coming like this to rip everything off. And we vary the spacing on the fingers so that we start tearing apart the outside and then it just works in so we're not taking off huge chunks of anything at once because what we want is just the hop itself. We don't want any leaves, we don't want any twigs. Uh, nothing is perfect. We get some but we try and get it as clean as possible. After it starts going through the machine it drops down onto a belt. The belt drops it down onto what are called dribble belts. The dribble belts are belts at an angle and they're always moving upwards. Hops are round so they'll roll down. Leaves are flat, so they tend to go up. And that's how we separate the, bind, the hops from the leaves and the sticks. Uh, once they're off the dribble belt, it goes onto a cross conveyor. 
Somebody will be on near the cross conveyor because there's always some leaves, always some twigs or whatever going through. So just the final picking to get the, the hops clean. Uh, after the hops are picked and cleaned and in the bucket, we take the bucket into the drying area. Uh, the drying area is just a big screen with a fan blowing air up underneath it because the hops are about 75 to 80 percent moisture. If you try and package them that way, they go moldy in a matter of a day or two. So we have to dry it out to about 8 to 10 percent moisture, which is very dry. It's, it's almost like picking up feathers. Uh, once they're dried, we compact them because they are so light, so fluffy, to try and ship any quantity of it, you'd use a bag this big for 100 pounds or for 50 pounds of hops. Just very awkward to handle. So we compress it. We put it through a compactor, which presses it down into small blocks. Then we take that block, slide it into a plastic bag, and we vacuum seal it. That way the air is taken out, the hops would no longer be oxidized, which breaks down the, the lupulins, the good part of the hops. Uh, so it's vacuum sealed, and then we'll freeze it. So instead of a bag this big, we get it down into a wafer about like this. So it's much more compact, much easier to handle, and a much longer shelf life. Now once everything is packaged and frozen, uh, that's when it can be sold. Uh, home brewers will buy a couple of ounces at a time because they have small batches and that's all they'd need. Uh, the larger, my, still micro breweries, but the larger breweries, they'll use about one to two pounds per barrel of beer that they're making and depending on the size of their system, uh, they'll buy quite a bit. Typically we'll sell 30 to 40 pounds uh, at a time of one variety that will go into a batch. Sometimes they'll use a couple different varieties. Uh, the brewers around here are very anxious to see how we make out. Uh, we are too. People are very much interested in local. We had some beers that were done with our hops last year and the year before and the flavor is really interesting. It's just so much fresher. Uh, the hops are fresher. They haven't been sitting in a warehouse for a year and a half or anything like that. We pick them, they go to the brewer, they go in the blend and uh, a week or two later we have wonderful beer. Uh, they're happy to have it. We're happy to sell it to them and Right now we have more people asking than what we can grow.